Farm. I'm Bo McFall. This is McFall Farms. We believe strongly in faith, family, and farm life. If this is your first time visiting, we thank you for being here. If you're a return subscriber, we're glad you're watching as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, do us a pleasure. Hit that subscribe button down below, ring the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Today, we are going to talk about high tensile wire. I'm actually running a new set of high tensile electric. I've never run before, all new to me. I've done a bunch of research online about it, different manufacturers' websites, things of that nature. I've done a bunch of research uh, on best goat fencing practices. And high tensile seems to be a great, inexpensive way to go overall, easy to install. So we're going to take a look at that because I've got a lot of these little guys back here that were born this year that I'm having a real problem with slipping under the front wooden fence. I have a wood fence down the front of the property and uh, and obviously they get their heads stuck in this 6x6 six six cattle wire. Not a good thing for goats. I wouldn't recommend it. And so today we're going to show you that installation. So come with us. Let's check it out. Whoa, that was deeper, huh? <laughs> What'd you think? Was that fun? Some more? Yay! All right, so today we're going to cover installing high tensile fencing. And behind me is the materials we've compiled, and we'll give you that list and show you how to use them as we go. So today we need to get this done to keep a lot of these smaller goats that were born this season, the kids, from sliding under the front fence, being out in the ditch and out in the road. They always come back in because their mamas are here, but it's something we've been needing to get done, so we're gonna get done. So here's what we're gonna use. All right, so we'll be using a 12 and a half gauge high tensile electric wire. I had to pick up a spinning jenny, which will pay out the wire. It makes it simpler to unravel and roll. Need a set of crimpers or fence splicing tool for making your splices and your connections. I opted for some grounding kits that come with uh, the three six foot galvanized rods, grounding clamps and 50 foot of wire. This is the wire sleeve, insulated wire sleeve to go around the wire for wrapping post. This is an underground wire that has the insulation made around it. Tension spring to get the proper tension on the wire. Strainer, which is also a form of tensioner for ratcheting down and tightening your wire. Here's your wire splicing sleeves, as well as the connectors. If you leave out a splice that has an opening in it, you can see the ones to the right uh, for connecting that. And then as an insulator on wooden post, you can use these ribbed insulators. I also picked up some packages of this style of plastic insulator. Not sure which one I'm going to like the best, but I did get some of each and maybe some applications. I don't want to use those sleeves. And then lastly, to let everyone know that the fence is hot, we got some signs to put out. So that being said, we're going to put this material into motion and uh, let's go over to the fence and start getting it installed. Okay, so the first thing we set up to install this high tensile fence is our spinning jenny. Uh, did a little assembly on that. I'll leave a link above to a video for that. But this spinning jenny makes this a one-man operation to pay out wire all the way down the length of this wooden fence that we've got to do around the corner and back down the other side. I don't know, probably 1,500 feet or so, maybe longer. But uh, we're going to try to get at least one run all the way down and the lower two runs for the goats in this pasture to keep these kids from getting out. So the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is feed plastic tubes, these plastic insulation tubes, over the end of the wire as you're paying it out. And what these are gonna do is mount directly to the wooden post. One for each post as you go down. If you're mounting to wood, this keeps the wire from grounding out. So what I've done is I've counted all my posts in this run. So I'm gonna slide, go ahead and slide these insulators over the entire run so I don't forget and leave them out. All right, so now we're gonna pay out the wire. I'm 
got all the insulators over the wire, 36 of them for this run. So we're going to make our end connection here where we loop around this 4 before post. Normally you'd use a big brace post like the one beside it, but for what we're doing, retrofitting this existing wooden fence, these 4 before posts are plenty stable with the bracing all that's on them. So in order to wrap around that to insulate the wire against the post, we're going to begin with our wire crimps. I usually put three on my connection where I'm tying off to a post. And I'm going to throw a couple more on there to be able to hook, uh, jump back to either to extend the fence later or, or add hot wire to make one hot that's not hot. So you don't have to electrify all these. So I'm going to put five of these crimps on here. And I've already pre-cut a piece of this insulated tubing. Slip over our wire. You can buy these in pre-cut sections. Uh, I buy it in a roll where I can just cut it myself. And then we're going to start our first run six inches off the ground. We're going to feed that back through and flex our wire so that we can get those crimps on there. And again, I'm going to put three here using the crimping tool. You want to locate your crimp, your crimp connections beside each other. You don't want to space them out. And you can also snip the wire if you go too long. You can trim it down to be able to assist in not injuring any animals. Again, it's never hurts to throw a couple extra connections on there. They do make, and we also have, which I showed you in the beginning of the video, uh, basically an add-on crimp where it's open so you can slide it over the wire. But for what we're doing right here, we're gonna try to plan for the future. Your crimpers are actually marked. One, two, two, three, three, four, five, six, depending on the size of the crimp. We're using the two, three, which is the second hole. Those are crimp. I left a couple of extra connectors for crimping the hot line on. Or if we go back and add something later. It's not, not much to leave a few of those on there. So that's how you make your end terminal connection. And now we're gonna run, we're gonna stretch everything tight. Do the same thing we got here on the other end. So I'm gonna show you how we get everything tight. This is the need to run the high tensile electric. As you can see, I've got three goats on the wrong side of the fence, while all these older, larger goats are on the right side of the fence. They're going underneath the fence across the ditch, into the road, and many times over to the neighbor's side, which he doesn't mind because it keeps his ditch mowed, but I don't want my animals getting hit. So this is the need for the high tensile. All right, so Clinton is making sure the insulators are spaced, one at every post, and we're gonna cut and put the tension spring in this section so we can get the proper amount of tension. Basically, he's just kind of dropping a insulator at each post before we cut this in the center. We'll get this part done and we'll show you how we cut it in the middle and add the tension spring and strainer to adjust the tension on the fence. All right, this is your tension spring. This is your strainer. We're gonna attach the strainer to the tension spring. We're gonna install it into the fence. Now on your tension spring, there's a couple of notches. If you can see these grooves, first and the second groove, this second groove is at 250 pounds of tension and that's where we're gonna set the fence at. So that's how we know when it's adjusted there, we know there's enough tension on the fence. So we're gonna put the, uh, put the strainer on here. Essentially, we're just gonna feed that through. Overlap these two here, where it'll fit back in that spring. Fed the strainer, threaded it through there, slid the springs back through. There it goes. Okay. So now we're good to go there. 
We'll attach that to our wire where we're going to cut it in half at, and then we'll be able to get tension. All right, so we're basically going to install the strainer and the tension spring. We're going to put three of the crimp ferrules on each side of the wire. We're just working with this one side right now. I'm just going to go back through that spring, bend that over, and our ferrules took off down the line there. We're going to crimp these three just like we showed you how to crimp everything else. All right, so what we did is we bent this wire in a 180. We're going to hook it back through the hole and over that little cup there. And then we're going to proceed to tighten it down. So I don't have a tool, we're going to use this ratchet. get your hands in the strainer it will pinch the snot out of you if you do and if I had a, my strainer tool I wouldn't need to do it this way because the tool actually is a fork type tool that fits over it I'll leave a link down below to show that you see we're starting to get some tension on it the spring starting to move out and we'll be watching to where that spring gets to that 250 pound mark And that way we'll know where to stop. So we turned a slight corner, probably a 45 degree corner. I use these double plastic insulators I showed you at the beginning. You just fed staple those on there. That keeps the wire off the post. We've got those uh, adjusted to 250 pounds of tension. So now we're going to start stapling the insulators all the way down the line. Good. So Clint's positioning the insulator with the center of the post. A single staple drove through it, or drove around the insulator rather. But, uh, you can see he drove that staple down, not all the way home where there's some space, so it doesn't crush that insulator and cause it to ground out in the future. So we're going to repeat this process about a hundred times and then show you closer to the end result. All right, so basically on our first time out, we have run four strands, one just below the bottom board, one splitting the other two boards, skipped the opening, went to the third and then to the top edge. Sometimes we run horses and cows in this pasture as well, keep them from cribbing and off the fence. Many posts, typically you're supposed to be about 30 feet apart. Uh, so it would save you some time. I had an existing wooden fence. We're just putting a couple of strands up to keep the goats from going under. Uh, and so we'll do some cross fencing later where we'll set our post much further apart. But for this episode, for this video, we were showing you basically how to pull those strands to get those ran using that spinning jenny, how to insulate your corners and your ends. And if this video has gave you value and you've enjoyed it, we'd love for your comments below. Hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. We'll leave some links above. Uh, to other videos that are related to this and a playlist related to this as we show you next how to install your fence charger grounding applications and tying everything in to make it live and hot.